Okay, then let me, because you, you ran over this and they probably won't pick up on this, but will you tell me what's more important? Is it the off season for that nine months or is it mm-hmm. the three months before a show, in your opinion? Off season, definitely. Why? Because uh, that's where you're going to, you know, make your gains. You're going to, you know, if you're going to grow muscle, that's when you're going to put on the muscle and, you know, make your best gains and results. And like I said, I was off the gear when I did that. When I got ready for a show, I pretty much knew, hey, even if I go on the gear, it's pretty much, like I said, just to hold on to the size I'm having because I'm restricting the calories. And mainly because, like, off-season, I might train two hours a day cardio three times a week. When I got ready for a contest, I'd train two hours in the morning, two hours at night, plus I'd do three hours of cardio a day, like an hour in the morning, hour at lunchtime, then an hour at night, just because Please. I had the time to do it and I right, enjoyed right, doing right. it. And if I did a bit more cardio, I could eat a little bit more food rather right. than starve myself. So, yeah, so the gear I took in was just mainly to help me recover and just stop me from wasting the muscle away because I was training a lot more and doing a lot more cardio off season. Like I said, that's when you're going to make your gains and stuff like that. And Okay, so because I think I have the hardest time telling new age people today or communicating this to today's world is that it is that nine months or it's the year or it's the two years off mm-hmm. season and just get ready for one show is, is such a hard sale because today they want it now. I want to get it now. I want to do mm-hmm. a show now. And you were just saying something. I can just hear the fans going, listen, I can take the whole year off, get on some gear, diet for three months and do a show. Yeah, you can, but you're going to retain nothing after the show and you're going to look, it's going to be just short lived. And I always say, and I want people to understand Lee is strong today. Lee is developed today because it's been a consistent life Mm -hmm. style. And these guys won't get that. They're just going to go, let me just do three months of gear and eat right uh-huh. <laughs> and then afterwards. And I, and I never understood this because when I do expos like you have your whole career, and I guarantee that you've never heard this either. Nobody's ever come up to you and said, hey, listen, Lee, I'm incredible on my nutrition. I have a hard time training because I've never heard that. Mm-hmm. I've heard I'm an animal in the gym. I'm a freak, dude. I crush you, but I can't diet well. And so mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get this and nutrition and nutrition is such a huge part of it all, whether it be off season and contest time. And I know I probably could have been a little bit better. There's a few years in the off season where, you know, of course you get, I did so many shows like one year at 97, I did 11 shows that year. And because sometimes I'm so regimented on dieting and that off season, sometimes I was too relaxed. I might have breakfast and then I might have lunch and then I might just pick up food. I might have two meals a day in a protein drink. I figured if I was more consistent in my off season and ate regular six meals, I probably could have had a little bit more size. But even myself, I just couldn't be bothered because I'm so regimented contest time. I didn't want to have anything set up. I just wanted to eat when I wanted to eat and do whatever. But I still trained hard, but I could have been a bit more consistent off season myself. And what I'm seeing now, sadly, too, you know, how well, goes don't, on don't about. run over that. Don't run over that because I hope everybody heard that. And I agree mm-hmm. that it's hard to stay motivated and consistent off season. When you got a show, mm-hmm. it's different. I get that. But if yeah. there's something he just said, it's if he could have done just a little better off season, he could have been a little bit better for the show. And it's a hard yeah. thing to do. Continue, continue. Because I want you to kind of talk to them and explain to them how can the individual be – on precise when they're off season because it's a it sucks. Well, it you know, does. But it just, we're eating, you know. Mm-hmm. How do you get motivated? Well, well I think we still just found though if I'd started doing a bit more cardio because in the off season, you know, I like to eat big meals and you know when you're eating clean food, you can have a meal and 20, 30 minutes later you're starving again because there's no fats in it. So sadly you know, some of my famous off season meals could be some Kentucky. <laughs> it's like if I eat Kentucky chicken the fat in Kentucky exactly chicken, right. I could eat that at lunchtime and I'm still bloated come six o'clock at night. So I don't eat till then because my stomach's still bloated. So yeah. it's just a matter of picking foods that wouldn't bloat me up too much. So if I had have eaten that, like I said, a little bit of junk and good in between, I would have been a lot better. But like I said, if I had a big meal like that, that's the reason I wouldn't eat again for hours later because I'm still full and the stomach still feels bloated or I love milk products, even though I shouldn't have them. But 
if I drank a liter of milk, I wouldn't eat again for maybe two or three hours. And it's like, oh, I'm still bloated and stuff like that. So I knew that, like I said, I could have been a lot more. I, I, some days I work out my off season because you could eat like it's almost like, say, you know, when you're eating clean all the time and you think to yourself, I've got a cheat day coming up. I'd have a cheat day. And I'm like, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that. And let's just say I'm dieting on three and a half thousand calories of good, clean food. On my cheat day, I've got all the stuff in my mind I'm going to eat. I might go have a big thing of pancakes and then I'm bloated and then I might eat again later and have a burger and then I'm bloated again. Then then it's dinner time and I'm like, shit, this was my cheat day and I've only had about 2,000 calories. I've eaten less than I would have eaten if I was eating my clean food. It's just that yeah. because you've changed the fatty foods and sodium loaded foods, you just go Bleh, and you bloat up so much that, you know, it's, it's a different type of food. But I'm eating less calories of junk. I would have eat, been better off just eating to clean the food and get more calories into me. So, yeah, so I, I, we, we are living the same life, you and I, uh, in that sense. It's, it's exactly that. You're so hungry because you've been dieting. It's a cheat day. Mm-hmm. And then you start out with something like that and you're just bloated for the next six hours. You're like, shoot, I just yeah. killed my whole day. And then you're like, and you're like, oh, the cheat day is almost over. I got to try and <laughs> ram all this food in before I go to sleep. <laughs> what do you think is today's society on not wanting to? So you talked about milk. You talked about these products that maybe you feel you shouldn't do. So Mm -hmm. for me right now, to give you an eyesight, is I am doing the milks. I am doing uh, a lot of oils, um, carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. I'm eating. I'm feeding the body, but not just the body. I'm trying to feed the connective tissue to just Mm -hmm. heal the body. Because I did kind of what you did where you competed those 11 shows. That is so destructive to the body. People don't mm-hmm. realize you're in a deficit. You're in a deficit for so long. You're doing dry outs. You're, you're, you're killing yourself to peak. And then a couple of weeks later, you got to peak again. And it's just, you're hurting the body. And I did that with my incredible dieting in the last couple of years. And so I'm uh-huh. really taking my time this time, this off season and just going until the body kicks in, until the body utilizes that 5,000 calories, until the body doesn't feel sluggish, I'm going to stay with this and keep feeding it until it heals. And what I'm finding is that I'm starting to come out of that. Now, it took three months. Mm -hmm. It took three months for my body to heal from the damage I did to it from dieting so hard. And the strength and everything is getting stupid. And I can't wait till you get here because we're going to lift. But I think I might be the strongest I've ever been, even more than the early 90s. I'll be over there on the machines like the rehab workout. How you going, Mike? Good. Keep lifting. (laughs) Keep going. But... Um, Hold on, let me just change the pin from 20 to 30 pounds. I'm going heavy today. <laughs> How do you think we can teach these people that there's there's a nice balance to food where you shouldn't be in a deficit all the time? You shouldn't trying to be 365, I'm cutting, I'm cutting, I'm cutting all year. I don't think mm-hmm. they understand what they could do to their body, especially later yeah, on. It's that, it's, that, it's that fine line, especially in the off season where, you know, because I go from one extreme to the other because I didn't care, so I ate too much. But it's like you don't want to get as big as I did, but you still want to have enough where, like I said, a lot of people I find, even in the off-season, they might think they're eating a lot of food, but still they're just eating enough to maintain what they have. It's almost like you've got to eat that little bit more. It might only be 800 calories extra a day because you've got to go over to really make sure you're not missing out on any nutrients or proteins and stuff like that. But Sometimes if you go too far, like I used to, you go and get really big. So it's that fine line to knowing basically how many calories you roughly need and then maybe just go on 800, 1,000 over that, which isn't really much if you're adding if you're five, six meals a day. If you just had 200 calories extra to each meal, whatever, it's not really much. It could just be, you know, another cup of rice here or another piece of chicken breast on this meal. So it's easy to add that extra 1,000 and that might be all you need. But like I said, you want to have more calories because most people I see are on that either borderline of enough calories just to maintain or they're actually under. Because like I said, they're doing what I did. They have a meal and then because you feel full, you might not eat for four hours. So at the end of the day, you're like, I've only had three meals today. You add up the calories, it might be only 1,800 calories when you died on 3,000 calories. So, right. you know. Right. Why not do what he did? Why not do what he did? Because he said he used to blow up. but Right. But well, you can you can do what I did, but I'd go to the far extreme. Like if I could, I used to compete at what most I competed was 218, 206 was my best, but I'd, I'd weigh sometimes 280 in the off season. So, you know, I'm like 
70 odd pounds over contest weight and hey there i am look at that that's a plate of kentucky there Woo. is that robert reef. Reef. is that a shoot with robert reef uh yeah that was i uh, forget who did that could have been urban that was for the before and afters for muscle tech where they're like really push the stomach out lee here yep. and do that sort of thing so i'm like they're like we'll give you ten thousand dollars to do these photos i'm like i would have done it for free i get fat every off season <laughs> so, but the thing is though uh, and that's the illusion there i'm about 270 and when you see the transformation picture i weigh about 210 and it, like i said it's such an illusion there i just look like a fat pig you go i don't know what he weighs when you see him side by side at 210 i look twice as big and muscular as i do at 270 it's like Somebody just did a video and I'm sitting there dying. He shows a gladiator photo of me mm -hmm. and gladiators. I was in battle dumb. I'm 285, 295. Um, and he showed a photo of me doing uh, this sliced photo. That, um, I won't say that I'm what my weight is, but I'm sliced. And he's like, mm -hmm. you can't go from this, from gladiators, maybe 215 to this size at 230. And he's just like crushed the numbers. I'm almost 300 in gladiators. Uh -huh. It doesn't look like much. And I'm 257 in the, in the ripped photo. And I'm like, it plays an illusion. So you there next to you mm -hmm. sliced, everybody's going to go, Oh, you sliced, you're bigger and you're 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. smaller. Yeah. That would happen to me all the time. Cause people would see me in the gym being bulked up like that. And I'd start getting ready for a shower and start leaning up and they go, Oh shit, Lee, you put some size on you're looking bigger. I'm like, I've lost 35 pounds. They're like, what? You look bigger. You know, because the muscle cool starts thing? coming out. You get the definition. And it's like, it's, like I said, my arm, when I was bulked up, would be 24 inches. When I was in contest shape, it was 21. But even at 21, ripped, it looked like it was still 24. It's like, you've seen it. I've seen guys in the gym who might just have an 18-inch arm, but got the beautiful bicep, tricep shaped and styrated. Their arm looks 20. If you say, fuck, your arm's 20 inches, just cause it a shape and definition. It's yeah. like, how many times you see movie actors on the big screen, like the Van Dams and Stallones, you think they're massive because of the in shape, but you see them in person, you're like, fuck, he's tiny. But, you know, it's like, that's the truth. It's funny because I've lived all the stuff that you're saying. It's like when you first start the diet, it's great because mm -hmm. you still got that size, but then the shape oh, comes out and everybody oh, goes, don't, don't, oh, what, God, about that, what about that in between stage where, like I said, I love to be big and bulked where you're strong. I start dieting. And now I'm not big and bulked. I'm not ripped. I'm in this in-between stage where I got a little definition here, but my waist is still fat. So you sort of soft and spudgy in place. I said, that's the bit where it fucks with your mind. It's like, shit, do I just go and eat again and go back to being bulked? Or do I just pay that look in the mirror and push through it? Because once you get through it, then everything starts coming in. But that, that in-between stage where everything just looks soft and you're like, oh, Jesus. So that's the crossroad. <laughs> Let's say that that's the crossroad. Uh -huh. A lot of these people that are watching today are in that crossroad. Mm -hmm. They've been moderately dieting or they've been dieting and they're getting to this point and they can go either right or left. Do I uh -huh. keep dieting or do I go off season? Mm -hmm. Is there something and this can be a tough question because it's it. It's going to make you really dig on this one. What would make you go to the right to keep dieting? What would make you go to the left to go off season? Not for you, particularly you, but mm -hmm. for you, if you were coaching somebody, what would you tell them mm -hmm. if you can, if this is a, it's a tough well, question. I'd be, like, I'd be like, listen, like, it's like, how long you've, have you been off season? You know, if you came to me, you want change. I'm going to make you have change. You know, you've been this way your whole time. And yes, because I've been through it, I know how, you know, how it is to go like this. But I'd tell people, look, going back to how you were off season is too easy. You could just go and have a couple of meals in a few days and you're back to that. I said, look, mentally, yes, it's going to be hard. That's why I always tell people physically when I got ready for shows, dieting, the cardio, the training was easy. The mental side was the hardest you're ever going to go through. The mental aspect where your mind's going to play games. You've probably known it too. Where Even when you're in shape some days at the gym, you could look in the mirror and go, I look like fucking shit. And people go, what are you talking about? It's just like, it's almost like these yeah, for a anorexia. Second. Because these, my team's here and, and, and you guys understand that now because they'll go, you look good. And I'm like, I look like shit. And they're like, dude, mm -hmm. you look really, really good. And it does. It mm -hmm. messes with your mind. So everybody at home. <laughs> and you're like, and you're like, you're just saying that because you're my friend. You're just saying that. <laughs> you're <laughs> <good."> <laughs> you. 
but uh -huh. you're, you're 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 listening to a legend of the health and fitness world tell you that it freaks with your mind mm -hmm. you understand for you you average joes that have your job and your family and stuff you're listening to a, a legend of the industry telling you it messed with even him and it messes with me and so don't feel bad that it messes with your mind when you do get mm -hmm. to that oh yeah and we're all gonna we're all gonna get to that point and this is where i said it just be strong and keep going because it might only be two weeks you're at that point where you look at yourself i just stopped looking at myself because like i said the upper body around the delts and arms might be tightening up, but the waist is still flabby. So it's like, oh, I look good here. I look soft here. So it's like, I don't want to even look. And generally it's only like two weeks and then you'll notice it all coming in. And then you feel, fuck, I'm glad I stuck with it. I push through. And once you get past that, it just seems like, you know, I'd go to bed. You know, I always say the power of the mind. And I'd lay in bed as dumb as it sounds to put myself to sleep. I'd be like, I am getting more ripped. I am getting more shredded. My skin's getting thinner. Like this mantra, I just keep saying in my head over and over. And when I was married to Kathy at the time, I'd just say this, I'm getting tighter. It's getting tighter here. And like I'd picture it in my mind, the abs coming in, the waist coming in. And every couple of days, she's like, you look to be changing all the time. And it's something to be said, you know, if you can see it in your mind and stuff and you believe it, that mentally it will start happening because once you see it start happening, like I said, you get past that tough two weeks and you look in the mirror, all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, my waist has come in. The excitement comes back. You're like, yeah, I'm getting in shape. So when you go back to the gym, you're training harder. Your cardio is getting harder. And week by week, you just seem to be getting in shape. So, you know, it's going to be hard. But once you get through that, trust me, it's worth it in the end. Even if you're not getting, like I said, not everyone's going to go into contest shape, but just for the average person who wants to just feel better about themselves and get into some decent type of shape, you know, just to go from how they were to looking, you know, good and feeling good, you know, it's going to be hard on your mind. And like I said, it's too easy to go back to that. Just yeah. stick it out. And like I said, generally, it's just that two weeks max at the top where it just seems to nothing's happening. You might even hop on the scale and go, oh, fuck, even the scales aren't moving. Why am I even bothering? And that's where it starts playing with your mind because I'm dieting hard. I'm doing the cardio hard. But it's almost like your body just plateaus for two weeks to fuck with you. The test you out to say, okay, which way are you going to go? And if you get through that, then it will start dropping off again. Let me ask you another question. 